from the SiliconANGLE Media office in Boston, Massachusetts. It's the Cube. Now, here's your host, Stu Miniman. Hi, I'm Stu Miniman, and welcome to the Cube's Boston area studio. Welcome back to the program, Cube alum Ashok Ramu, Vice President and General Manager of Cloud at Actifio. Great to see you. Happy New Year, Stu. Happy to be here. 2020, hard to believe. It I said, uh, feels like we're in the future here. Mm -hmm. um, and talking about future, uh, we've watched Actifio for many years. We remember when copy data management, the mm -hmm. category was created. Uh, and really Actifio, we were talking a lot before cloud was you know, the topic that we spent so much talking about. But Actifio has been on this journey with its customers in cloud for many years, and of course that is you know, your role is working, building the product, the team working all Absolutely. over it. So give us a little bit of a history, if you would, uh, and give us the path that led to 10C announcement. Sure thing. Um, we started the cloud journey early on in 2014 or 2013, uh, when Amazon was the only cloud that, that really worked. Uh, we built our architecture, in fact, we took our enterprise architecture and put it on the cloud and realized, oh my God, uh, you know, it's a, it's a world of difference. The economics don't work, the security model is different, the scale is different. Um, so, I think with the 8.0 version that came out in 2017, uh, we really kind of figured out the architecture that worked for large enterprises. Uh, particularly enterprises that have diverse data sets and have requirements around you know, marrying different applications to the data sets anywhere they want. So we came up with efficient use of object, we came up with the capability of you know, migrating workloads, taking VMware VMs, bringing up on Azure, bringing up on GCP, et cetera. So that was the first foray into Actifio's cloud, and since then we've been just building strength after strength. You know, it's been a building block, understanding our customers, and thank you to the customers and the hyperscalers that actually led us to the 10C release. So this, I believe, you know, we've taken it up a notch wherein you know, we understand the cloud, we understand the infrastructure, the software auto-tunes itself to know where it's running on, taking the guessing game out of the equation. Uh, so 10C really represents what we see as a launch pad for the rest of the cloud journey that Actifio is going to embark upon. Uh, we have enabled a number of new use cases like AI and ML. Data transformation is key. Uh, we tackle really complicated workloads like HANA and Sybase and MySQL, et cetera. And in addition to that, we also adopt different native cloud technologies like cloud snapshots like recovery orchestration of the cloud, et cetera. Yeah, I, I think it's worth reminding our audience there that you know, Actifio has always been software. Absolutely. <laughs> and when you talk about, you know, I, I think back to 2013, 2014, it was the public cloud versus yes. the data center. Uh, and we have seen the public cloud in many ways looks more and more like what the enterprise has been used to. Absolutely. Uh, and the data centers have been trying to cloudify uh -huh. uh, for a number of years, and things like containerization in Kubernetes uh, is blurring the line, and of course every hyperscaler out there now has uh -huh. something that reaches their public cloud into the data center, and of course uh, technologies like VMware are also extending uh, into the public cloud, or uh, we've, we've looked, SAP of course is now in mm -hmm. all uh, of the cloud environment. Environment. So, with hybrid cloud and multi-cloud as uh, kind of the, the the waves of driving, um, you know, help us understand that you know Actifio lives in all these environments, and they're all a little bit different. So, how does Actifio make sure that it can provide the functionality and the experience that users want, regardless of where it is? Oh, absolutely, I and mean, you said it right. I mean, Actifio has always been a software company. And you know, it is our customers that showed us uh, by cloudifying their data centers that we had to operate in a cloud. So we had on-premises VMware clouds a lot before we were in Amazon and Azure and Google. So that evolution started much early on. Uh, and so from, from what, you know, Actifio is a very customer-driven company, be it, you know, all, all segments of the company are, are, are driven by the customers. And, and with two, in 2019, and even before, when you see a strong trend to migrate workloads, to move workloads, we realized uh, there is a significant opportunity because the hardest thing to migrate is the volume of data because it's ever changing and it is ever growing. Uh, so, so the key element of neutrality was the application itself. Uh, Microsoft SQL is SQL no matter where you run it. It could be on a, on a big 
Windows machine in your data center or in GCP, it makes no difference. So Actifio's approach to start application down uh, basically gave us the freedom to say, we're gonna treat SQL as SQL. I don't know if you're running in Azure, Google, Adobe uh, Data Center, or Ali Cloud. It makes no difference to me. I understand SQL. I understand SQL's availability groups. I understand logs. I can capture it and give it back to you. So when we took that approach, it kind of automatically gave us infrastructure neutrality. We really didn't care. So when we have a conversation with a customer, it basically goes around the lines of, okay, Mr. Customer, how much data do you have? And what are your key applications? Can you categorize them in terms of priority? Um, it usually comes out to be databases or the crown jewels. So they're the number one priority in terms of data management, migration, test dev, et cetera. Uh, and then we basically drill down into the ecosystem the databases live into. Uh, so because we walk application down, the conversation is the same whether the customer is in the data center or in the cloud. So that is how we've evolved. And that's how we're thinking from a product standpoint, from a, from a support standpoint. You know, the overall company is built that way. So it makes it easy for us to adapt a new platform that comes in. Uh, so when you talked about you know, how does each cloud is different, you're absolutely right. The security concepts are different. Right? Microsoft is built on Active Directory. Google is built on, on, on something very different. So how do you neutralize and how do you make this work? We do have a, a, an infrastructure layer that basically provides cloud-specific capabilities for various cloud platforms. And that has gotten to a point where it understands and tunes itself from a security standpoint and a performance standpoint. Once that's taken care of, the rest of the application stack, which is over 90% of our software, stays the same. There's no change. Uh, and so that is how we kind of tackle this, you know, because in the ecosystem we live in, we have to keep up with two people. We have to keep up with the infrastructure people who are making it bigger, faster, and they also have to keep up with the application people who are making it fancier and more complicated. <laughs> so, so that's unfortunately the ecosystem we live in, and taking this approach has given us a mechanism to insulate us from a lot of the complexities of these two environments. Yeah, th that's great, because when, when you talk to customers and you say, what's going on in your environment, Change is difficult. Absolutely. So, you know, how many different pieces of what I'm doing do I need to move to be able to take advantage sure. of, of, of the modern economics? Uh, on the one hand, uh, you know, if I have an application and I like it, well, maybe I could just lift and shift it. Mm -hmm. But if I'm just lifting and shifting, I'm not necessarily taking advantage of the full cloud native Absolutely. environments. But I, I need to make sure that my data uh, is protected, the, yes. you know, backup, you mentioned security, are, are of course the top concerns. So uh, it sounds like in, in many ways you're, uh, you know, talking, helping customers work through some of those initiatives, being able to take advantage of new environments, um, but not need to, you know, completely change everything. Uh, it's, you know, maybe I'd love to hear a little bit, uh, you know, when you talk about the developers and DevOps initiatives that are happening inside customers, um, you know, where, where does that impact, uh, or you know, where, where does that connect with what Actifio is doing? I think it's, it's, it's a great question. So um, I, let me start with the real customer example, right? So we have this customer, uh, SEI Investments, who's a, who's a, who basically, their business model is to grow by acquisition. So they're adding on tens of hundreds of developers every quarter. So it's impossible to keep up with infrastructure needs when you grow at that pace. Uh, they decided to adopt a cloud platform. Um, and with each cloud platform comes some platform specific piece that all these developers now have to retool themselves. So, so I'm a developer, I used to come in the morning, open up my machine and start working away on the application. Now I have to do something different. And if there is 300 of me and the cost of moving to the cloud was a lot less than training the developers. It was much harder to train the developers because it has to be an ongoing process. Um, so we were presented the challenge of how do you avoid it? So when we are able to separate the application layer from the data layer because of the way we operate, what we presented a solution was to say, just move your, what is the, what is the heaviest layer you have? That's the database, okay. And what are the copies you're creating? I'm creating hundreds of copies of my Oracle database. Okay, let's just move that to the cloud. All of the front end application doesn't see a change. Thanks to the great infrastructure work the cloud providers do, you have 10 gigabit to everywhere. So network is not a problem, compute is not a problem, it's just available on an API call, so you provision that. All they did was the data movement, moved it from point A to point B, gives you the flexibility to spin up any number of copies you want in the cloud. Now, 
Your developer tool sets haven't changed, so there's no training required for developers, but from an operation standpoint, you've completely eased the burden of creating 100 more copies every month, because cloud is built for that. So you take the elasticity of the cloud, advantage of that, and provide the data in the last mile to the cloud, thereby applicate, the developers are able to access the application with the same level of ease. So that is the paradigm they're seeing. They're seeing, you know, in, in, in some of our customers, there is faster and better storage provision for Actifio because there are 190 developers working off Actifio where there's only about a handful of people running production, right? So it's a, it's a paradigm shift is, is where we see it. And, and, and the pace at which we bring up the application, wherein we're able to bring up a 150 terabyte Oracle database in three hours. Before Actifio, it used to be maybe 30 days if you were lucky. So, so it's, a, it's not just an order of magnitude, it is what you can do with that data uh, is where you're seeing the shift going to. Yeah, it, it's interesting. Uh, when, when you go back and look at some of the changes that have happened in the cloud, uh, cloud storage was one of the earliest discussed mm -hmm. use cases there. And back up to the cloud was, mm -hmm. was one of the, 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 the earlier pieces of the cloud storage discussion. Uh, yet, you know, we, we've seen changes in maturation into what can actually be done. Explain a little bit how Actifio uh, enables uh, the, the even greater functionality when you're talking about backup to the cloud. Absolutely. Um, um, you know, the, the object storage technology, um, it's probably the, the most scalable and stable piece of storage known to mankind. Uh, because you know, nobody can build that level of scale that Amazon, Azure, and Google have put into it. Uh, from a security standpoint, performance standpoint, and scale standpoint. So I'm able to drop my data in Boston and pick it up in Tokyo seamlessly, right? That's, not, that's unheard of before. And the, the, the biggest impediment to that was a lot of the legacy application data didn't know how to consume this object storage. So, so what Actifio came up with our onboard technology was to light up the object storage for everybody. And, 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 and basically make it a performance neutral platform wherein you take the guessing game out of the customer. The customer doesn't need to go research S3 or Google Nearline or Google Persistent Disk and say, I want 10 copies here versus five copies there. Actifio figures it out for you. You give us your SLA, you give us your RTOs and RPOs, and we tell you, okay, this is the most cost-effective way to store your data. Um, you get the multi-year retention for free. You get the, the GDPR, uh, you know, AppJ kind of, uh, protection for free, you get the geo redundancy for free. All of this is built into the platform. In addition, you also can run DevOps off the object store. You can run DR off the object store. So we enable a lot of the legacy use cases using this new technology. So that is kind of where we see the cusp. Uh, wherein in the cloud, there's always a question and a debate. Does dedupe make sense? Uh, dedupe consumes a lot of compute, takes a lot of memory. You need to have that memory and compute whether you want it or not. We're seeing a lot more adoption of encryption where the data is encrypted at source for, when you encrypt data, dedupe is just a big compute churning platform. It doesn't do much for you. So, so we went through this, you know, uh, this, this debate actively, I think four or five years ago, and we figured out object store is the way to go. You cannot get storage. I mean, it's, it's a buck a terabyte in Google and dropping. How can you get storage that's reliable, scalable, at a lower cost? All we had to do was actuate the use of that storage, and which is what we did. Yeah, uh, I, I'm just laughing a little bit because, you know, gosh, I, I think back a dozen years ago, the industry knew that the future of storage would be object. Mm -hmm. Yet, it's taken a long time to really be able to leverage it and, and use it, and the, the cloud, uh, the hyperscalers, of course, have been a huge enabler on that. Absolutely. But we don't want customers to have to think, think about, it. about that it's object underneath, and that's the bridging the gap that, that I think we've been looking for Absolutely. Uh, there. Uh, what else, we talk about uh, really being able to extract the value out of cloud, uh, you know, data protection, uh, uh, disaster recovery, uh, migrations are all things that are top yeah. of mind. Absolutely, all those use cases, and we're seeing some of the thought leading CIOs talk about AI and ML. Um, we've had a couple of customers who want to basically take their manufacturing data from remote sites and pump it into Google BigQuery. Now we all know manufacturing happens in Taiwan and China and Singapore and all those locations. Now how do you take data from all of those locations, normalize it into, and pump it into Google BigQuery and get your predictable results on a quarterly basis? It's, 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 it's a challenge because the data volumes are large. 
So with our cloud technology and our onboard capability, we're able to funnel the data directly into Google Nearline. And on a quarterly basis, on a scheduled basis, transform it, push it into BigQuery, and bring out the results for the end user. So that journey is pretty transformative from a customer standpoint. What they used to have five people do maybe once a year, now with a push of a button happens every quarter. So it's a, it's a change in how, you know, how, how the AI and ML analytics evolve. Uh, the other element is also you know, our, our partnership with IBM. We're working very closely with their Cloud Pack for Data. Uh, Cloud Pack for Data is, is, is an awesome platform built to, norm, to, to analyze any kind of data that you might have. Uh, with the Actifio's normalization platform, you basically can feed any data into Actifio and it presents a unified interface into this Cloud Pack. So you can build your analytics workloads fairly easily. Yeah, so we've talked a lot about cloud. Uh, one of the other C's in 10C, of course, is containers. containers. Uh, if we look at containerization, uh, when it first started, it was stateless applications. Mm -hmm. uh, most applications that are running in containers are running for a very short uh, period mm -hmm. of time. So help us understand where Actifio fits there. What, what's what's the, the problem statement that you were solving? Oh, absolutely, so containers are, are, are coming up, are up and coming and, and are a reality. And you know, the, as, as we see more applications flow into containers, you see the data that lives outside the container. Uh, because containers are, you know, short-lived, they're microservices, they come up and they go down, they can, and, and the state is maintained in a storage platform outside the container. So, Actifio tackles containers uh, by taking the data protection strategy we have for the storage platform already well-defined, but enhancing the data presentation into the container as it comes up. So a container can be brought up in seconds, maybe less, but the container is only brought to life when it can read the data and, and start working again. So that's the bridge Actifio actuates. Uh, so we understand you know, the architecture of how a container is put together, how the container system is put together, and basically we marry the storage and the application consistent uh, data in, in the storage into the container so that the containers, databases, or, or or applications come to life, and that could be in a customer's data center in the public cloud. Kubernetes is enabled, all of that. Absolutely, it can be it can be anywhere. And with with 10C, what we've done is we've also integrated with cloud native snapshots. So if you talk about uh, you know neutrality for the container platform, if it's on premises, we have all kinds of access to the storage, the infrastructure, and the platform. So our processing is very different. If you take it uh, to the cloud, uh, let's say Google, Google Kubernetes platform is a fairly, it's a black box. You get some storage and you get containers. Um, and you have an API access to the storage. So in Google, we automatically auto-tune and start taking the Google, Google Cloud snapshots to take the storage protection. So that's the other way we kind of neutralize the platform. Yeah, uh, there, you've got a, thinking about just from a customer standpoint, one of their big challenges there is they've got everything from their big monoliths, mm -hmm. their major databases, through these microservice cloud native architectures there. Mm -hmm. um, and it sounds like, you know, you're, you're, is, is that just one of the fundamental architectural designs to make sure that you can span across those environments and give customers uh, a, a common look and feel in, uh, between those environments? Absolutely. The single pane of glass is a, is a big ask and a big focus for us. Uh, not just across infrastructure, it's across geos and across all platforms. So you could have workloads running AIX, VMware, in the cloud all the way through containers and manage it all through a single console to know when was the last good backup, how many copies of the database am I running, and each of these databases could have their own security constructs. So we normalize all of those elements and put them in a single console. Okay, uh, 10C shipping today? 10C is shipping today. Uh, we have early access to a few customers. Uh, the general availability release is possibly in the February timeframe. Okay, and if I'm an existing Actifio customer, uh, what, what's the path for me to get to 10C? Uh, you know, our support will reach out and, and do a simple software upgrade. It's available on all cloud platforms. It's available everywhere. So you will see it on all the marketplaces and the regular upgrade process will get you that. Okay, and if I'm not an Actifio customer today, how easy it is for me to try this out? Oh, it is, it is very easy. Um, with our uh, Actifio Go SaaS platform, it's a one-click download. You can download and, and try it out, try all the capabilities of the platform. Uh, it's also available in all the cloud marketplaces for you to go access that. All right, well, Ashok, a whole lot of pieces inside of 10C. Congratulations to you and the team uh, for building that, and definitely look forward to hearing more about the customer deployments. Thank you, we have exciting times ahead. All right. 
Uh, lots more coverage uh, from the Cube throughout 2020. Be sure to check out theCUBE.net. I'm Stu Miniman, and thanks for watching theCUBE.